in our lesson. James, if you don't mind, could you open us up to prayer, please? Yes, sir. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, God, for another day you allowed us to see. Thank you, God, for our pastor. Who oh, glory to God. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything you've done, Lord. God, we pray you bless us as we go throughout this lesson and throughout this day. And increase our understanding of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 Praise amen. God. We thank God. Amen for uh, the prayer and for you that are here at this present time. We're going to go ahead and get started. And um, today we're in our last chapter of the book of Acts. And um, I pray that. Uh, <sighs> You've had the opportunity to, to um, review this chapter as well as all of the others. And uh, as again, as we um, say from time to time that um, if we don't really put any effort into uh, you know, our, our study, then um, you're not going to get much out of it, praise God. And so, um, again, I want to continue to encourage us to persevere, amen, in studying the word of God. Um, all right, so chapter 28, um, verse 1, and when it was determined that we should sail, I'm sorry, excuse me, too far back. And when they were escaped, verse one, then they knew that the island was called Melita. Okay, and uh, I think we showed you last week uh, on a map, the map, um, the location of uh, this particular island. Uh, it really, it's a, a sort of a trio of islands, um, and it is called, well, today it's called the Maltese Islands. And uh, with Malta or Melita being the largest of the three. Now, Paul, or Luke rather, writes that when, again, that when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melito and now called Malta. And the barbarous people shewed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. Um, now, this, this term barbarous people, it is not a derogatory, it's not meant to be a derogatory term here. Um, but it, it simply means that they were natives or islanders or foreigners. In other words, um, uh, those that were not, you know, Greeks looked at others as being, that's a term they would use for those that were not uh, Greek speaking. And so again, it just simply, in this case here, means foreigners or the natives of this island, okay? And so, Immediately, they were shown kindness uh, by those amen, that were there. For they had kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. 
when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer. Hmm. Though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Uh, he shook off the beast in the fire and felt no harm. Um, and so we kind of get a sense for, you know, um, again, these were, um, again, uh, people that worshiped uh, pagan gods or idol gods, um, they, again, there is this um, idea here that, you know, uh, and they make the statement that, all right, that uh, no doubt this man is a murderer, all right, making the assumption that because sort of vengeance or justice has sought him out. His crime must have been one of the worst there could be. And in this case, you know, uh, a murderer whom th though he escaped the sea, the storm at sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. Okay. Um, I want to stop there a minute. And, um, um, you know, this is not too far off from where, from what many people think, maybe not to this extent of calling someone a murderer or what have you, or making that assumption. But in this case here, they reason incorrectly as to, as many of many people do, because that they had supposed that every calamity is a judgment for, for some particular sin. Okay. Um, we look at the fact that uh, John 9 uh, and St. John chapter 9. Verse one through three says, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him saying, master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And so the assumption is that somebody had to do something wrong to cause this man to be born blind. Okay. Um, the classic example would be whom? Job. Uh, he had to have sinned against God for all of this calamity to befall him. And, you know, if we're not careful, even in our own lives sometimes, you know, we'll look at it and say, well, what did I do wrong to deserve what I'm going through now? You know, and if we're not careful, every um, not so pleasant thing, I'm not even going to say it has to be um, something that is uh, extremely, you know, um, uh, bad, but just I got a speeding ticket. Why did I deserve this? You speed, you sped it, <laughs> you broke the law. All right, but the point is, the, you know, when we look at this and if, if, if we're not careful, it, these type of, you know, life itself, and that's kind of what I, I call a lot of this, it happens to all of us and we don't dictate life, only the Lord does. And so, you know, things happen and, we have to get to a point where, you know, we recognize that and we learn how to better deal with it. You know, I could just simply look at the things and it, it was kind of, I saw a little irony in what, you know, I was looking at this today, uh, looking at this yesterday and, 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 and taking note of this, only to have several experiences from the time I got up this morning to the time I got here this morning, all right? Uh, 
Incident number one, I'm sitting at the table trying to get breakfast real quick so I can get out to get to the church, spill a, a completely full cup of coffee. And boom, all, almost, you know, thank the goodness I'm still a little fast enough to get out of the way before it hits my clothes, but it gets my shoes up. It's all over the table. It's all on the floor. You know, you got to deal with that. All right. And thank the Lord for my daughter. She took over that before I even had to go do it, you know. Um, I get get just get my car out of the shop and you know we're headed to started it up ready to go to come to the church and uh all of a sudden this indicator light comes on says you know starter system malfunction call service <laughs> all right had to drive another car okay and then of course we get here and there is ants crawling out of the church <laughs> Okay, I said, you know, and, you know, there was a time when I would have said, what did I do? <laughs> okay, but things happen, okay, and a lot of times they happen, you know, and, and if we're not careful, they, they distract us from what we ought to be doing. Now, you know, in my mind, I, 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 I'm trying, and I, I try my best to sort of, you know, get myself in a place where, you know, I can shut everything out going into my class and, you know, trying to focus as much as I can on what I want to, you know, what, what it is I want to get across. And, you know, and this is one reason why to this, you know, to a great extent, I get here at uh, 932, <laughs> you know, because I'm dealing with all of this, but, you know, and that's why I find it rather I, I, the irony of what we're talking about now. Then you know these things happen. All right, praise God, Amen. And so we need to understand that. Now, again, it is not to say that yes, um, the general you know the, the the general idea that you know that all sin will be punished at some time is true. Okay. <sighs> Now, I'm not discounting that, okay, but we are not qualified to affirm every particular calamity we'll that faces somebody, you know, is a direct judgment for sin, okay. Some cases we may be able to, but the majority, we're not, praise God. And so here again, amen. In this case, we see that, oh, he, he was bitten with a viper. So he had to have been a murderer. And so what they're doing, and the scripture tells us in, 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 in uh, verse five, and, and, and he, Paul, shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Now, no doubt what was happening is this, this, this viper or this snake, if you will, this serpent is you know, was probably lying dormant or in hibernation. And when he got, when that heat, when he got close to the heat and was warm, it woke him up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he just latched on to, to, to Paul. All right. And, you know, and he, and he shook him off into the fire and felt no harm. Uh, that takes us to uh, Mark chapter 16. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, no, no, you get yeah, um, I, I was just going to say, um, what you were saying about how, um, they passed judgment already, and and then how you said about with us in our own lives, how we're sometimes past judgment, and mm -hmm. it made me think that sometimes, as you were saying, it we'll get distracted, sometimes we'll miss the whole lesson that we're supposed to learn from that. You know, this may be something to help us grow or something to, it's not really just for us to affect us, but it's for us to help someone else, Amen. to be able to encourage someone else, maybe to understand someone else better so that we can help them. But if we focus so much, oh my God, Lord, I did something wrong. Oh mm -hmm. Lord, I didn't sin. Oh goodness, why mm -hmm. did this have to happen to me? You know, mm -hmm. it, it it takes all the focus off of God and put everything on you. And then your whole focus is off. And then, then you, you, you can't be that vessel that God wants you to be. And then sometimes you find yourself going through that same thing again. And it's like, 
what happened and then you will start learning and so like you said here we'll pass judgment on others but like you said we'll pass judgment on ourselves and in that passing that judgment we miss the whole thing that we need to learn from god and we take the glory from god and put it all on us mm -hmm. amen all right. All right. thank you praise god anyone else i like to just add uh to what patrice said um it's been my experience that um i believe that a lot of the um situations that i may encounter um, may be a lesson to may me, make me um, to understand and be more sensitive to mm -hmm. what others are going through. Um, mm -hmm. It's something about going through something yourself that will give you that sensitivity you need to be able to show compassion to others mm -hmm. um, when they're going through things. Um, you know, there's been times when I haven't gone through things and, you know, you're not as patient with the individual that's going through a particular situation, or you know, you may pass judgment, but um, I believe that God has allowed for things to happen in my life so that, and and now I can see I'm more sensitive because I say, you know, wow, I know what you're going through, and it it makes me more patient and more sensitive to be able to show compassion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Uh, thank you, uh, Sister Parthenia. Um, one of the things that, you know, um, that is clear, uh, yeah, Paul, I believe, uh, mentions this in, in the book of Romans, uh, to rejoice, in, and he's speaking of the body, body of Christ here, rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. And, you know, the idea being, you know, that there, there is that compassion uh, that needs to be uh, shown toward them that are going through. And literally when he speaks of, of, of this, uh, you know, particularly that weeping and, you know, that, you know, showing that empathy. Okay. And, you know, the idea being that um, they're going through a set of circumstances that causes them to weep. And so, I, you know, even though I may not have experienced this, I have to try my best, you know, to feel what they're feeling. Understanding that it's perhaps impossible, but I am so concerned that I want to be there for you. All right. And so when he talks about weeping with them, you know, that showing that, that empathy, praise God, amen. Showing them that, you know, they're, that, that concern, that, that care. All right. And so, you know, so when we look at this and, and even when we talk about the things that we go through, and I think both the sisters mentioned it is, is a lot of what a lot of what we go through is not just simply uh, for our own benefit or for our own experience, but it also it mean, allows us to help others and, and as, as well, you know, and, you know, and one of the things that that one typically learns, particularly I would hope the younger ones, you know, that with those that are aged, those that are, um, you know, I, 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 in my early years uh, in the church, um, I spent a lot of time, majority of my time was spent with my seniors, my elders, and that's how I learned a lot of what I know, is just simply not so much asking questions, which I could do, but just listening to their conversations with one another, you know, and gleaning, you know, these things um, there from their experiences and things of this nature. And, and, and that helped me immensely, all right? And so, uh, I, I, and, and that's just one of the things, even on a secular level, I, I, I prefer being around someone that could teach me something as opposed to just sit, being by someone just to waste my time because I was in a mode of, and still am, is I wanna learn all I can learn, praise God. I know, amen, praise God, Sister Ali, we, we may not get it all, but I'm gonna reach for all I can get, amen, praise God. Amen, there'll be a lot left over, but I'm, I'm just gonna continue, amen, praise God, until my, my last breath, praise the Lord, to pursue 
all the knowledge that I can. I, you know, I, I was one of those. I, I guess you could call me somewhat of a nerd. I spent my 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 lunch hour, amen, praise God, at school, uh, in the library, just you know, just you know, getting as much information about things in general that I could, praise God. And I spent a lot of time now doing that same thing, absorbing information, absorbing, you know, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, you know, primarily, amen, praise God, amen, praise God, uh, the word, but also, amen, even with what we're dealing with, whether it be, amen, praise God, economics, whether it be social issues, whether it be, amen, praise God, whatever, amen, praise God, because one of the things I come to find out, a lot of this is all connected, <laughs> and you see a lot of this, even in the scriptures, and, and, you know, one of the things that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, when we, I guess, finish this chapter and kind of an, because uh, I want to hear when, we do, when we're done, again, further, more of your observations about what we, um, what, what, what is here in this book of Acts. And, I, 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 and I, I wanted to give you some time just to sort of reflect on that because there's a, there's a lot there. And, and not only does the word bear it out, but also history itself bears it out, praise God, amen, about what went on or the things that Luke um, uh, speaks of. And, and what is interesting is also those things that are not spoken of by Luke here. Praise God. You know, interesting enough, we, we don't hear anything about Paul's death in Scripture. Amen. We don't hear anything about Peter's death in Scripture other than, you know, it speaks about how he should die, I believe, uh, in, in the Gospels. But my point is, you know, again, there, in my mind, you got to ask yourself the question why, you know. But that's for another time. And and um, but when we look at this and we look at the fact that back in our, our text here, and how that even when you know he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm, and our minds perhaps should go to Mark 16, verse 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Praise God. And this is what we see, amen, playing out in the case of Paul here. He's not tempting God. Oh, he does not oh. know that viper is there. Praise mm -hmm. God. Amen. And so he just shakes it off and he keeps getting up. How be it they look when he should have swollen. By now, amen, it, you know, something should have happened. You know, there are those that are waiting for something to happen to you. <laughs> My Lord. Praise God. I, I remember my father would make the statement from time to time, you know, when he, you know, when he, 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 he lost his leg and well, his kidneys, you know, uh, stopped working and he had to go on dialysis and, and then his leg, and then he lost both, both of his legs. And he made a statement once because he heard somebody said, I thought that roach was dead and he's still living. Amen. He's still carrying on the work that the Lord had called him to do. There are those, amen, praise God, amen, that, are, are, you know, would have thought by now, amen, praise God, you, you would have you been, been out of here, you've been gone, and should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they change their minds, how quickly we can change minds, and, and, and said that he was a God. So they went from one extreme to another. Praise God. Amen. Oh, he, he's a murderer. Thought he was going to get away. And, and, and yet vengeance suffereth not. Amen. Or the God of justice, as one quotes this, amen, praise God, and, 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 and that it, it is in the form of a goddess, uh, uh, Jupiter's daughter, uh, it was considered the god of goddess of justice, and so, you know, so he goes from being the murderer to being a god. All right, and and Luke stops there. All right, there's a lot that 
Luke doesn't say, okay? It doesn't, he just essentially makes that observation and he stops, okay? In the same quarters were possessions, excuse me, in the same quarters were possessions or properties, if you will, of the chief man on the island, all right? Or who would have been the governor of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. All right, now we're talking about, again, what? 276 souls, praise God, all right? And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and, and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. I'm going to read again uh, from Mark 16 and 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise God. Amen. So we see, amen, Mark 16 and 18. Amen. Praise God in action in this text here. And so when we when we speak of a, a bloody flux, it's, it's essentially dysentery or an infection of his intestines resulting in severe diarrhea. Okay. And so Paul, the scripture tells us, prayed and laid hands on him and healed him, thereby resulting in the fact in verse nine. So when this was done. Others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed, okay? Who also honored us with many honors. When we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary, okay? So they furnished us with such things as were necessary for, for us on our journey. Now, they didn't do this right here and then, but when they were about to depart, they furnished them with all they needed for their journey. Because remember, they, they remained here some three months. So sometime around uh, the first part of the year in January, they would have departed the island. So, and he tells us here in the next verse, and after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the owl whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And these are uh, twin goddess gods, amen, that, th that, that they believe that will protect their ship uh, at sea. And this was a common thing on most ships during this time. All right, and so when we look at um, what is interesting also is that the when you think about this it says here that after three months we departed in a ship uh, from alexandria okay and which had wintered in the owl whose sign was castor and pollux okay so really this ship would have had to have been there prior to them getting there all right because most of these ships would have been wintered by the time that storm hit, okay, all right? And so what, what, what you know, just, just an aside here, just saying how God provides, all right? You know, the ship is going to be lost, but guess what? There's another one waiting on you <laughs> at Malta to carry you, because you got to get to, you got to get to Rome, Paul. And when you think about this, and when you think about all, you know, it's, it's, it's it, when you look at it, it's one of those things where it, it's honestly, it's all about Paul, all right, getting to Rome. But it also shows you in, in this also that there are others that it affected and how that what you do can affect others, so many others, what you do or, or what God has for you to do also can be a blessing to many others, all right? These people were saved because 
Paul was on that ship. How can I say that? That listen, you know, here's what we're talking about. That ship was sailing regardless whether Paul and them were on there or not. That its destination was Rome. Praise God. Amen. And they were trying to make it there before the winter. And then, of course, when they got caught up in the storm, amen, and pulled away from Crete, praise God, amen, it is because Paul was on that ship, amen, praise God, that the Lord, amen, amen, praise God, amen, gave him a word that, amen, praise Lord, no one be lost, all right? It is not to say, amen, that perhaps, amen, the Lord would have delivered them regardless, but the reality of it was, this was all about Paul making it to Rome. And not only, I mean, one could have said, well, look, you know, he could have, you know, you know, he could have let the rest of them die and, and Paul live. And, but that's not the case here. It's just simply the fact that, amen, praise God, amen, we see even in the, the graciousness of God, when when the Lord, amen, praise God, is in what is going on. And, and not only does he deliver him, but he delivers all that are with him. Sister Marilyn. It just, like you say, in response to that, it just amazes me that in all his persecution, he mm -hmm. continued to work for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Here he is, he's a prisoner, he's <laughs> cast aside, uh, and, but yet he goes to pray for the man. So in spite of, instead of, like you said, instead of sitting there and saying, woe is me, he's like, what can I do for the Lord? What can I do to witness? What can I do to be an example? And so it's, it's amazing the example that he set. Amen. He must have had a great impression, praise God, because if you look at Malta today or the Maltese Islands, you'll see the St. John's Bay, St. Paul's Bay. <laughs> It's very prominent, praise God there, amen. So, um, and, 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 you, and thank you for mentioning that because you, you see that no matter what his circumstances are, no matter what his situation is, you know, there are those times when you know what, you know, you get tired, you just get tired, you know, so much is coming at you. And it's like, Lord, don't you see, I, I can, only do so much, but he yet he gives you, but yet you find yourself continuing. Even while you're saying you're tired, you're still doing what he, amen, requires of you, what he wants you to do, because, you know, what you finally realize, he, he gives you that resolve, but it's also has become your life. Amen. This, you know, my desire is to do his will. You know, there, there are times, amen, praise God, where my mind is just, just so full. There are times I can't even sleep last night being one of them because of all the things that, you know, you're, you're dealing with, you're faced with, amen, praise God. But it is my life. This is what he has called me to do, praise God. And, and so when I, when I look at, and, and when you talk about Paul, it is at a whole nother level. Praise God. Amen. What we see here. And I think even as we get further into this chapter, you're going to see the influence that Paul, Paul had on people or brethren he hadn't even met yet. Amen. Praise God. That, that came out and then traveled miles, many miles to meet him on his way to Rome. And how that Paul talks about it being an encouragement to him, praise God. And every now and then, as you go through and as you suffer through these things, amen, the Lord sends, amen, praise God, someone or something along, amen, that encourages you, that, that says, you know what? I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing. As, or, or someone would say, I'm just gonna keep on keeping on, praise God. Why? Because you know this is what God, amen, has for you to do. And I tell you, some of the most happiest people, amen, are those that know I am doing what God has called me to do. Praise God. Amen. Praise the name of our Lord. Somebody would say, well, you know, amen, I, you know, if, if you are a prayer warrior, praise God, I, I keep telling us, you can be a worldwide missionary right at your bedside. 
Praise God. Amen. You can just look at Anna in the temple. Praise God. Amen. And all she was doing was praying and fasting. Praise God. And I can't say all because that's a big thing. Somebody has to pray. Somebody has to pour. Amen. Praise God. Their heart out. This is one of the things. Amen. This week that the Lord was just showing me. Praise God. That 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 prayer cannot stop. Praise God. That that turning down of one's plate. Amen. Praise the name of our God. Can I stop? It's like, Lord, what do we do? There's so many requests. There's so many, amen, that are saying, pray for this and, and pray for that. And, you know, and, 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 you know, and I said, what do we do? You do what you're doing, but you turn it up. Praise God. In other words, you turn the volume up. Pray. In other words, amen, you continue to pray. You pray even more. Praise God. You fast even more praise God. Amen. Praise the name of our God. And this is the thing, amen, that we, that we see, and we see it, we see it in Paul here, that consistency. Yeah? He continues, even on this island, praise the Lord, amen, shipwreck. And what is he doing? Amen. He's, he's praying, amen, he, that the sick are being healed, they're being delivered. And even though Luke does not say this, praise God, I find it very difficult Paul being in a place three months does not mention anything about the word of the Lord. He had to. It's in him. Praise God. Elder James, amen, praise the Lord. If, 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 you, if you all were to see him on the street, the first thing out of Elder James's mouth is going to be, praise the Lord. Why? Because it's in him. Praise God. Amen. And the word of God <laughs> was in Paul. Hallelujah. And, and so in three months, I'm certain, praise God, that somebody, amen, praise the Lord on that island, amen, got a word from the Lord. Because we find out later in history, praise God, amen, that it became, amen, praise the Lord, an island, amen, praise God, that embraced Christianity. Amen. And so when we see this going on and we see, amen, praise God, that, you know, in spite of, and that's the thing, in spite of what we go through, praise God, we, we still got to go forward. You know, my father told me something on the day that he died. And I was thinking about that again, as I mentioned this morning, early this morning, amen, praise God. And he, he, he said, you know, he said, praise God, drive and go forward. Don't drive and stop. Amen. Praise God. In other words, don't give up. And that's what I took away from it this morning. Don't give up. Do not get up. Give up. Because what he, know, what he knew and what he understood is there are going to be those moments when you just want to throw your hands up. You just want to give up. Praise God. You look around and you, you, you go, what's the use? Praise God. Amen. But he, but, 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 and this is what I'm saying, that it's so important for us to be there to encourage one another. And see, a lot of times there's something somebody told you years ago that you retain even to this day. And every now and then when a time, you know, in a, in a time of, of, of distraught, in a time of great stress or whatever, those words, amen, come back to you. Those words of encouragement, those words that say, you know what, just, just keep, keep going. Praise God. Amen. Yes, those words of wisdom. And, and, and there's some of those words. Amen. Praise God. You didn't quite understand. You didn't quite get them. But now you really understand what in the world they were talking about. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, that is what it's going to take. Praise God for the person. Amen. Such as that, that is made up in their mind. You know what? I'm going to serve God. And so that doesn't make things smooth. If anything, it makes it even a rougher journey, praise God. But your mentality, amen, praise God, your mindset, amen, glory to God, amen. Though, though, though you know, I, 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 I've got to go through, though things are rougher, praise God, amen, praise God. What you, what your, your hold, your conviction, amen, to stay with God is even stronger, praise God. And so that, that's what begins to happen is no matter what, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to do what he wants me to do. And this is what we see here, 
praise God. And so when, when, when Paul, amen, praise God, is telling Timothy in 2 Timothy, that second letter, uh, I believe that was written from prison in Rome, that he is, you know, you know, he, he is ready now to be offered. And literally, you know, he's reflective of his life and where he is and, 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 and essentially is saying to Timothy, I have given God everything that I have. I, 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 I haven't held back anything. And that's one of the questions, you know, and when I looked at that and I begin to see that, and I said, you know, that's a question that we all have to ask, ask ourselves. Are we giving God all that we can? You know, we talk about giving him our all. Are we really doing that? Are, are, are we really, I mean, is that, is that the mindset that we have or is that what we're trying to get to is the point where I can just give him my all? Praise God. Amen. And that's what we want to be able to do. Amen. Praise God. It's not to hold anything back. Amen. From him. Glory to God. Praise Lord yes. Bishop. Yes. I, I, I have a... Um... A couple of observations and uh, some questions. Uh huh. Um, you know, they, they, you know, there's a phrase that says, "It's not about the destination; it's all about the journey." Uh huh. Um, but I guess in Paul's case, it was about both. Yes. But um, I, I'm curious. Do Do you think? Well, that. Um, well, the observation is, I, I I see that his his um objective was clear. As far as uh, when you said that uh, God told him that he had to be in Rome, right? Yes. yes. And um, I, I was thinking about it's like the well, one I got what I got from that is God can show you show us exactly what we need to be doing, where we where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of thinking about the idea of when uh, with Peter, when uh, although Paul didn't have a vision where he saw whatever and then you know he had to go to Cornelius but you no know, Peter knew he had to go to uh Cornelius mm -hmm. so in both of those I see that you know God is able to show us uh show us exactly what our objective you know are or is mm -hmm. uh, my question my questions are do you think Paul knew that he had he, he had to go through all of those things uh along the way because he, he knew he had to be here in Rome, but as far as the, the shipwreck being bitten by a snake, you know, and <laughs> all these things that like uh that befell him, do you think that he he knew that he he had to experience that or 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 or, or what? Um and then mm. the, the second question, why Rome? Why why did why Rome? Okay, why did he have to be at Rome? All right. Uh first question. Uh, no, he did not know. He did not know the specifics. All uh, right. The, the one thing that he was able to um, warn them of is that when they had gotten to, what is it? Uh, uh, yes, when I guess when they had gotten to Crete, that he had warned them about the fact that he perceived that, if, if, that this journey would be with much danger and loss. Okay. But the specifics, you know, because again, he he tells Paul this, that he must appear, um, you know, he tells him earlier that you've testified of my name in Jerusalem. Now you must be be my witness in, in at Rome. That that I believe was given him two years prior to him leaving for Rome. All right. So he is all he already knows that. And then the Lord reminds him of that during this journey. But the specifics. You know, uh, what happens in between, um, no, he didn't know. And that in, in, in many cases is, 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 is the case, you know, that, you know, we, we don't know those specific things that are going to befall us. He, he talks about even from place to place that he went that afflictions and bonds, you know, followed him, you know, but the, the exact, you know, conditions or what was going to happen so the specifics of those things he did not know all right the second question Rome why Rome <laughs> that's a good question that's a very good question what was Rome at this time 
the center. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Amen. At that time, it was the capital seat of that empire. And guess what he sent him to Rome to do? To testify in the capital. In that, in, that, in that place of power. I was going to read something. Now, let me, and I think it's probably appropriate that I do this to answer, to sort of supplement your question. All right. Um, hopefully I can read this. All right. And this, this, this is not out of the Bible. This is simply out of history. Paul of Tarsus, a, a, it's entitled, and the long arm of Roman law. About 55 CE, Roman gods transported a prisoner named Paul of Tarsus from the port of Caesarea in Palestine to the city of Rome. The journey turned out to be more eventful than the travelers had planned. Partly boarded a sailing ship. Uh, the party boarded a sailing ship loaded with grain and carrying 276 passengers as well, the ship departed in the fall after the violent storm, uh, excuse me, soon encountered a violent storm. For two frightening weeks, crew and passengers alike worked furiously to keep the ship afloat, jettisoning baggage, tackle, and cargo to lighten the load as wind and rain battered the vessel. Eventually, the ship ran aground in the owl Allen of Malta, where storm, storm, where storm, where storm-driven waves destroyed the craft. Yet the passengers and the crew survived, including Paul and his guards, and who spent three months in, on Malta before catching another ship to Rome. Paul had become embroiled in a dispute between Jews and early proponents of the fledgling Christian religion. Christianity first emerged as a sect of Judaism accepted by only a small number of individuals who regarded Jesus of Nazareth as a savior for the Jewish community. By the mid first century CE, Christianity was attracting numerous converts throughout the Mediterranean basin. Paul himself was a devout Jew from An Anatolia who accepted Christian teachings and became a zealous missionary seeking converts from outside as well as within the Jewish community. Indeed, he was the principal figure in the development of Christianity from a Jewish sect to an, to an independent religious faith. When a crowd of Paul's enemies attacked him in Jerusalem, where he was promoting his recently adopted faith, the resulting disturbance became so severe that authorities of the Roman imperial government intervened to restore order. Under normal circumstances, Roman authorities would deliver an individual like Paul to the leaders of, this, of his ethnic community. And the laws and customs that, were, that of that community would have determined the person's fate. Paul's case, however, was different, knowing that Jewish leaders would condemn him and probably execute him, Paul asserted his rights as a Roman citizen. Although he had never traveled west of Greece, Paul had inherited Roman citizenship from his father. As a result, he had the right to appear his, to appeal his case to Rome, and he did so. His appeal did not succeed. No record of his case survives, but tradition holds that imperial authorities executed him out of concern that Christianity threatened the peace and stability of the Roman state. Paul's experience reflects the cosmopolitan character of the early Roman Empire, which by the first century CE dominated the entire Mediterranean basin. Roman administrators oversaw the affairs from Anatolia and Palestine in the east to Spain and Morocco in the west. Roman military forces maintain order in an, in an empire whose scores of different and sometimes conflicting ethnic and religious groups. Like many others, Paul of Tarsus traveled freely through much of the Roman empire in an effort to attract converts to Christianity. 
Indeed, except for the integration of the Mediterranean basin by the Roman Empire, Paul's message and his faith might never have expanded beyond the small community of early Christians in Jerusalem. Like the Phoenicians and the Greeks before them, the Romans established close links between the various Mediterranean regions. As they conquered, uh, as they conquered uh, lands, or uh, they, they, they passed, excuse me, as they conquered, uh, they pacified them and brought them into their empire. The Romans enabled merchants and missionaries and, and others to travel readily throughout the Mediterranean basin. The Romans differed from the, their Phoenicians and Greek predecessors, however, by building an extensive land empire and centralizing the administration of their realm. At its, high, at its high point, the Roman Empire dominated the entire Mediterranean basin and parts of the Southwest and parts of Southwest West Asia, including Anatolia, Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Syria, Egypt, and North Africa, besides much of the continent of Europe and even parts of Britain. The Roman Empire also served as a forum for the communication of philosophical ideas and religious beliefs. Educated elites often embraced sophisticated Hellenistic philosophies, particularly Stoicism, which found adherence throughout the Roman Empire. The larger population took comfort in popular religious beliefs, many of which promised personal salvation to devout followers. Over the long term, Christianity was the most successful of the popular religions of salvation. The early, Christian encount the early Christians encountered harsh opposition and persecution from Rome officials, from Roman officials. Yet the new faith took advantage of the Romans' well-organized imperial holdings and spread rapidly throughout the Mediterranean basin and beyond. Eventually, Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire, and the imperial sponsorship enabled Christianity to spread more effectively than before. Brother Stewart, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. I have some more. <laughs> All right, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise God. Amen. So when you look at that, and you know, God we talk about the Lord, you know, he works in time and it's about time and it's about seasons with him. And when you look at, you know, when he came at the time that he came, you know, that he walked this earth and that he, you know, he, you know, he, he institutes this, you know, this, 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 this process of redemption for us. And then he, you know, prepares those that will come after him, his disciples, praise God. And, you know, when you look at that and, and you look at how that he used um, or he facilitated this process of the spread or the advancement, because one of the first things he says in Acts 1 that we read, you know, talking about the fact that we're going to be his witnesses and, you know, in, in, in where in, in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the utmost parts of the earth. And if you look at it, it's almost like a concentric circle. It, it's when he goes from Jerusalem to Judea, you know, to Samaria, even further out, you know, into the utmost parts of the earth. And essentially what he does Amen. To facilitate that is he uses what has been put in place initially by the, this Roman Empire. He, he said when, he, when the, the text that we read talked about, amen, a land empire, what they're talking about is the road systems that they built to allow, allow access, easy access, quick access to these places. And so what are they doing? The same thing, the, you know, that the, the same roads, the merchants were traveling and things, and then the, the missionary began to travel. Amen. Praise God. Those, amen, that were carrying the gospel. And so the Lord puts all these things in place, amen, to further this gospel. Praise God. Amen. 
And so, you know, this this is one of the things that I, you know, I I I hope, you know, that we can see. And, and even as, you know, what the Lord declared even to his disciples in after, you know, his 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 dealing with the woman at the well, and, and she goes into the city, and the Lord then turns to his disciples and he speaks to them and says, You are entering in, you know, to someone else's labor. You know, you're you're reaping what someone else has already sown. And, and really, I believe, and I believe this with all my heart, is the fact that when he is saying these things, look, you know, he has already sort of laid a foundation, you know, and that foundation in my mind was those synagogues that have been scattered, spread throughout all these many places. And as we mentioned, and, and, and we'll, you know, um, I'm almost out of time, but I, I want you to go back to Acts chapter two with me. We'll pick up the rest, amen, from this. But I, 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 I need you to, you know, when, 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 Mark, when Luke writes here, and, and, and this is on the day of Pentecost, and, and he, he, he makes this statement, and, and when you get a chance, and I would encourage you to, you know, um, uh, and, and typically in most of your Bibles, you'll see a map uh, of the Mediterranean basin. Um, and um, uh, just sort of look at these places that he mentions and just, you know, just, you know, check them out on that map where draw, you know, you know, you know, make a copy of that map and just draw circles around it. And then look at the, look at the picture that you, that it, that, that it presents. But he says, you know, in verse number eight, verse number seven, and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, wherein we were born. And these, this, those that he is speaking of now are, you know, Jews and, and, and proselytes. And so look at what he says. And he starts, Luke gives us this list, Parthenians and Medes, Elamites, and dwellers of Mesopotamia, and of Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and, and Asia, in Phrygia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in parts of Libya, and Cyrene, this, Libya and Cyrene, that's North Africa, and strangers of Rome, all right, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God, okay. You see, by this time, they, you know, after that last captivity, uh, uh, you know, that took place with uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and, 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 the, and the Babylonian Empire, they were scattered. And not only were they scattered, but these are those that retained the God of their faith. And so they built them synagogues, places where they could come together and learn of God. But not only could they come, but others could come, all right, that were not a part of the Jewish community, the Jewish faith, and learn about this one God. And so when the Lord says, you are entering in to another man's labors, you know, these things were already put into place long before Peter, James, and John, and Paul, and the others had came on the scene, you see. And so what you see is you see the plan of God and how it unfolded. And so by the time we get to the, you know, this gospel of Jesus Christ, everything that is needed is in place and it just, it, it's ready to go. And so this is why when we talk about, you know, what time is it? And as the Lord said, it is not, it is not planting time. It's harvesting time. And so what the Lord tells them is to send labors into the vineyard. To do what? To harvest. Mother Ali, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So quick, because I know we're out of time. Mm -hmm. So can you say, you know, the Bible said there's nothing new under the sun. Look at us on Zoom. Uh, that, we're talking to Chicago, Ohio, uh, North Carolina, go. Virginia, every, I mean, everywhere. Okay. You got That's all it. I want to say. Sister Ali. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That, that's, that's what we're talking about. All right. 
So even, you know, so to that end, and I'm, 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 I'm done now, but to that end, here's the thing. Yes, we're coming back in person, but you know what? We're going to keep that virtual connection. We have to. And, and, and if anything, we're going to improve it. I'm quickly working now and trying to make that connection happen between here and our churches in Jamaica. So we're, we're getting close. We're almost there. We may not have it by convocation, but we'll, it will be shortly thereafter. It's important. Praise God. Amen. So we thank God for you. Thank God for the service. I guess I want to say amen to our fathers. Happy Father's Day to you. Praise God. And to all of you all, amen. We thank you. And it is time I turn it over to Elder... Me, Bishop. Brother James, God bless you all. And we'll pick up, amen, where we left off on Tuesday evening. Bless you all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God for the lesson this morning. Thank God for the word. Happy Father's Day to our pastor, Bishop Roach, and to all of the fathers. Happy Father's Day. But right now, we're going to break for about a couple of minutes at 1045. And we'll come back in the name of Jesus. God bless everybody. Be blessed. Let's fellowship in Jesus' name. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. And to the mothers that had to be fathers. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day, Bishop Roach. And Happy Father's Day, everyone, and have a wonderful morning. Enjoy the service. Bye-bye. Hi, Jade. It's Grandma. Are we on our way to the prayer room? I'm just waiting on Daddy. Hey. Mommy gave you a bath, Jay. Ha, ha, ha.